this software is really impressive. Using it, you can copy any voice you'd like. So let's see how you can quickly set it up. AllTalk TTS is currently one of the best voice cloning programs out there. It's free, it's open source, and it doesn't require you to have a very powerful PC to run it. It allows you to take a few seconds of a certain character or a certain person's voice and then clone it and use it as a regular TTS voice. It's highly configurable and features a great documentation with all the information you need to get you started. In this guide, I'll show you exactly how to install it and then generate your very first voice line based on your chosen text input. The last thing I want to mention now is that Autoc TTS also features a text generation web UI integration and that means that you can give your AI characters voices and actually be able to hear them when they speak to you. If you want to know more about local and private chatting with AI characters, check out my other video on how to easily set up the text generation web UI I'm speaking of. Now let's start the Autoc TTS installation process. The very first thing you'll need on your system is Python. If you already have Python installed on your system, feel free to skip this step. If not, go to the official Python website and download the Python installer like so. Once you run the installer, be sure that you've checked these two boxes, just like I did here. Once you've done that, click on install and then allow the installer to make changes on your device like this. Now simply wait for the installation process to finish. I will speed it up here like always. After the installer is finished, click on the disable pufflink limit button, accept and then close the installer. The next step is to install C++ development tools for Windows, which are one of the main dependencies for Alltalk TTS. To do this, go to the official Visual Studio Community Edition website and download the main installer. We actually don't need all of the components that come with the Visual Studio Community Edition by default, so we'll have to uncheck a few things during the installation process. This way we'll be able to make sure that we're not installing anything Alltalk TTS doesn't need and we're not wasting any space on our drive. Once the installer starts, scroll down and select the desktop development with C++ option. Now here on the right side, uncheck all of the components, besides the Microsoft Visual C++ build tools and Windows 10 or 11 software development kit, depending on your operating system. The final selection should look like this. Once you're done with that, click install and let the installer do its work. It might take a while depending on your network connection and hardware, but the good news is that you won't even have to start the Visual Studio software and now that we have all the critical dependencies on our system, we can go ahead and install the Autoc TTS web UI right away. So now go ahead, exit the Visual Studio installer and head over to the official Autoc TTS GitHub repository, which I've linked in the description below. In there, on the right side, you'll notice the link to the latest releases of the web UI. Normally, I'd use Git to clone the files onto my system and then be able to easier update them in the future, but for this tutorial, I will keep things simple and assume that you don't have Git installed. For experimentation purposes, it doesn't really matter much. Once the zip file is downloaded, extract it. Inside, there will be all the files that the web UI needs to run. It still needs to be installed and configured on the first launch. Luckily, this is the easiest part of the process. Open the Alltalk TTS folder and locate the AT setup patch file. Double click it to run it and then select the Run Anyway option. A terminal window with the installation script should now show up. As you can see, there are two installation options available. As I've already mentioned, the Alltalk TTS supports both the text generation web UI interface and its own standalone version. We'll go with the latter, so we'll select the second option. Then we're presented with quite a few other things that the installer can do for us, but we're interested in the very first one. Install Alltalk as a standalone application. Go ahead and select that. Now you can truly sit back and relax because from now on the installer will do everything automatically. Mainly it will set an environment for the program to run in and download all of the remaining dependencies Alltalk TTS needs to run. As it still needs to get many additional files including PyTorch, this again depending on your network connection will take a few minutes to finish. As there are no additional user prompts in this process, I will just speed it up here. Once the installation process finishes, you'll be notified that you need to use the start Alltalk batch file to start the Alltalk web UI. We will now do exactly that. Close the installation terminal window and then go back to the Alltalk TTS folder. You'll notice the start Alltalk batch file. Right click it and run it as administrator to start the web UI. On the very first launch, the program will also need to download the voice models which it will use for voice cloning. Just be patient, there are a lot of files that it needs to get. Once again, I'll skip this process because there's really nothing to show here. After all this is finished and the main model is loaded into memory, the web UI will be available under a given local address. Simply copy it over to your browser to start using the program. If for some reason the page doesn't show up for you, it might be that you need to wait a little bit longer for the model to fully load. And so finally, here is the Alltalk TTS web UI. 
On the very first page you're greeted with, you can find all of the different settings you can tweak and all of the project documentation. The latter is actually very helpful and very well written and I strongly encourage you to give it a quick read before getting into using the tool itself. Right at the start there are many voices that are already preloaded for you to use and you can easily test them out in this window. We'll get to the custom voices in a very short while. The available settings range from changing the default temperature and repetition penalty values to switching on the low VRAM mode for older GPUs and automatically cleaning the output folder after a selected period of time. Aside from this view here, there is also another one. Click on the Alltalk TTS generator in the links section to access it. Here you can find a much cleaner version of the UI which you can use for text generation. So now let's hear some examples other than the ones that we heard in the very beginning of this video. Notice how quick the generation is even on an older graphics card. I'm using an RTX 2070 Super. This is the place you'll probably be visiting the most. Just check out all of these cool voices. Some of them are really realistic. Overall, it's a great tool. And it gets even better. For now, the project supports 16 different languages and they all work really well with all of the default voices and all of the custom voices you might create later on. If your native language is on the list, you can test it out and see just how realistic it can get. Other than supporting different languages and easy custom voice creation, Autoc TTS also supports fine-tuning the XTTS voice model, which allows you to get even better results. Once again, all the details are explained in the documentation which comes with the web UI. While for creating a regular voice you just need about 8 seconds of quality audio, for fine-tuning you need about 2 minutes of it. When it comes to the voices, these are simply just short clips of around 8 to 10 seconds of high quality audio, which in ideal conditions should be uninterrupted speech without any background noise. If you want to clone a custom voice, the only thing you need to do is to prepare such a clip according to the instructions mentioned in the Alltalk TTS documentation. I'll leave them up on the screen for you. For editing your sample, you can use any audio software you'd like. In my case, I'm using Audacity, which is a free open source audio editor. Once you're done with editing, simply put your voice in the Voices folder in the main Alltalk TTS directory. That's it. In the Alltalk TTS repository, you can find two additional links to extended collections of high-quality vocal samples. I'll link them in the description below. Once again, as I have already mentioned, Alltalk TTS is fully compatible with the text generation web UI. You can use this integration to give your AI characters voices and even set up a distinct voice for the story narrator. If you want to learn how to quickly set up the text generation web UI on your system, I link my quick tutorial down below. The installation process is even simpler than this one. So now you pretty much have all the basics that you need to play around with the Alltalk TTS software by yourself. If you liked this tutorial, don't forget to leave a like or a comment down below and please do subscribe for more. What's even more important, if you enjoyed using this software, please consider supporting its author. If you think you might want to do that, I'll leave a link for that too. That's it. See you next time. Bye.